Hey everyone, today I'm sharing three tips for better technique and more evenness in the upper register. The first key to good technique in the upper register is understanding the importance of stability. When we're playing in the middle register, for example, from G to G sharp to A, it's pretty easy to stay stable in the hands. Our thumb and first finger in the left hand are down the whole time and that helps us stay stable so that we can play it pretty fast. When we want to play these three notes in the upper register, our hands become less stable. The fingerings in the upper register are a little bit more acrobatic than the middle register and that's where we can start to have problems. Beginning on high G, we don't have the thumb down, then going to G sharp, we have to lift the left hand first finger, and then going to A, we have to exchange fingers in both hands. Not having the stability of the left hand first finger and thumb and having to move more fingers means that our stability can be compromised if we aren't balancing well. This first point of balance between the side of the first finger against the chin is really important for remaining stable when a lot of fingers are moving. If we focus on this point specifically, we can let go of some of the tension or squeezing that we have going on in the other fingers. When the flute is balanced and stable, it's kind of like playing a piano, where you're sitting at a piano, it's just stable, it's sitting there. We don't have to hold it up and we don't have to keep it steady. We can just move our fingers fluidly and with ease and not have to worry about holding. You want to translate that idea to balancing your flute. Fingers should glide easily and balance should be efficient. Taffanel and Gobert exercise number one is a good way to test your stability because you're working on five note patterns that are repeated. It becomes obvious if you're unstable, if during the same note exchanges in the five note pattern, you start to wobble or feel unstable. Really use this exercise to watch your fingers, especially in the third octave. There's a lot going on. A lot of fingers have to move and jump around. Find out if they're trying to grip or really squeeze and hold. Are they holding a lot of tension? and find out if lifting certain fingers compromises your balance and stability and can you redirect your effort in keeping balance so that your fingers can be free and not compromise balance. If your chromatic scale starts to sound chaotic in the upper register, this next tip is for you. Anytime a group of fast moving notes sounds unclear and uneven, it may be that you're not hearing a specific evenly measured grouping of notes that's fitting into the beat. To practice this in the chromatic scale, I'd like to add a tongue on the first group of every six notes so that I can hear more clearly the beginning of every group of six, and then I know I'm dividing cleanly. slowly at first, you can add space between, and you can repeat. Doing this slowly can help you uncover the spots that sound the least even and feel more difficult because a lot of fingers are moving around. And you can slow it down and play this in more groups, so I'm going to tell in groups of three now. Repeating and slowing it down into smaller chunks can let you put your eyes on what is happening that's making it uneven. For me just there, I really noticed that my right hand fingers were coming up pretty high. So slowing it down, I could focus just on keeping the right hand fingers a little closer to the keys, and then I had an easier time being more even, and I can now go faster. When you take away the tongue, you want to still define those anchor notes so that you can hear the even grouping and you can add a little bit of an accent there. After you've practiced this for a bit, you'll be able to really internalize those groupings so you won't need the tongue or the accent. You'll be able to have a really smooth chromatic scale, especially if you spend the time really noticing are your fingers moving really high up the keys. That's key as well. This next tip might help you if you're working on specific patterns and technique exercises and having to memorize them, but you're having trouble in the third octave. When we're going about learning and ingraining and memorizing technique patterns, we might start at the bottom, work our way up, and then by the time we get to the third octave, 
it's a whole new challenge. One of the most recent technical exercises I went about memorizing was in grad school. We had to memorize our chromatic major thirds. I started at the bottom, it took me a while and I worked my way up, but I was just struggling to really stay calm in the third octave. I would just do crazy things, I wouldn't know what note I was on, and it just wasn't clean, it wasn't happening. So I kind of took a look at this and I realized I know what the notes are in the bottom two registers, so I just want to translate smaller chunks of that into the upper register. So what I did is instead of going one octave at a time all the way up, I did smaller chunks in every octave and then added a few more notes. <laughs> instead of starting at the bottom really helped me learn the third octave and feel more comfortable a lot faster. I think this helped me to really also translate just the calm, effortless mindset that I have when playing the notes in lower registers. And you can take this idea if you have a difficult run in a piece where you're playing the third octave and it just feels chaotic and you see lots of ledger lines and you start to panic, you can take it down an octave and play through it. And you might hear yourself being a little bit more effortless. If it's a, if it's a melody, you might hear it more naturally. Um, if it's a technical thing, you can just hear what the notes are. So getting that effortlessness in your head before you take it back up the octave might help you to translate a little bit less forcing in the upper register. The best way to be comfortable with technique in the upper register is to work on it a whole lot. In addition to Tapenel and Gobert number one, especially in the third octave, there are three other books that I highly recommend. The first is The Aspiring Flutist Practice Companion and the exercise Thoroughly Thrilling Thirds. She writes, this exercise contains high C, C sharp, D flat, and D. And the only way to play high notes well is to practice them. This is a great exercise for making sure you're putting those high notes in a different context than just at the top of your scales. This book is a great challenge for the upper register. This is the Anderson Etude Book, Opus 33, annotated by Charles Delaney and edited by Eva Omsler. This edition features eight VA sections that feel crazy. It takes you between high C all the way up to high E in some cases. If there's anything that's gonna break you out of your fear of high notes, it's this book. Gilbert's Technical Flexibility is another great one because it features all the scales and patterns, but it takes you all the way up to the highest notes in the range. I hope you found this helpful. Please leave a comment below if you did or if you have other questions you'd like to see answered. Thanks for watching.